cap analysis. We've talked about cap a lot, and in fact, we've talked about cap that much that I'm no longer even saying cumulative accuracy profile because I am assuming that you're entirely comfortable with this abbreviation and the whole term and what it means. So let's see how to analyze the cap. As we've discussed, there are three lines that are important on the cap curve. The blue line, which is the random line, when you select your samples at random. The red line, which is our model line, the and different models will have different red lines, but basically it looks something like that. And the gray line, which is the perfect model, or when you have a crystal ball, when you can select all of the future turners or purchasers or whatever action takers, and you can select them right away on the dot without even selecting one single person that you don't want to select. And so these are the three main lines and how do we analyze this cap curve? We already know how to build it, but what can we derive? What insights can we derive from here? Well, it's kind of intuitive that the closer your red line is to the gray line, the better your model. The closer it is to the blue line, the worse. So how can we quantify this effect? Well, there is a standard approach to calculate the accuracy ratio. And to calculate the accuracy ratio, you need to take the area under the perfect model or the perfect line, which is colored in gray here and is called the AP. And then you need to take the area under the red line, which is colored in red here, which is AR. And then you need to divide one by the other. So you need to divide AR by AP. And then this ratio that you get is obviously between zero and one. And the closer this ratio is to one, the better. The further it is away from one and closer to zero, the worse. However, it can be quite complicated to calculate this area under the curve. Statistical tools can do it for you, but how can you assess the cap curve by just looking at it, so visually? It's not that easy to uh, get this quantifiable metric just by looking at the curve. So there's a second approach, and that's what we're going to discuss now. Let's uh, get rid of the areas, and instead of looking at the area, what you can do is look at the 50% line on the horizontal axis and look where it crosses your model and then look at where that line, the horizontal line from there, crosses the vertical axis. So basically, how many churners will you pick up or uh, action takers or how many positive outcomes are you going to identify uh, if you take 50% of your population? And in this case, we can see it's around 90% or something like that. And just by looking at that, there's a like a rule of thumb how you can assess your model based on that X number. And here it is. Are you ready? Here we go. So if X is less than 60%, the model is rubbish. <laughs> Basically, it's not useful at all. Um, you, you can create a better one. Probably you can create a better one and you need to try again. If uh, your model your X is between 60% and 70%, then the model is considered to be poor. Poor or average. And by the way, these are my this is my rule of thumb. Other people might have a different rule of thumb, but this is what I go by. If it's between 60% and 70%, it's it's a poor model, to be honest. Like you can you can do better than that. Um, if it's if X is between 70% and 80%, that's a good model. That's already where you should be aiming for. Anything above 70%, that uh, can deliver good quality insights to the business and actually deliver value. Anything between 80% and 90% like we see here is very good. It's extremely good. That's If you can get a model over 80%, that is an amazing result. And anything above 90% up to 100, that is just too good. It is too good to believe and there are there's one option that you should be very careful here with is overfitting. If your model is showing you results like 90% or say if a model is showing you 100%, then the obvious answer there is that one of your independent variables is actually a post-factum variable, meaning that it shouldn't be in the data because it's looking into the future. The person who supplied you that variable forgot to take it out or forgot to explain to you that um, you know the, their credit score actually uh, is turned into zero after they leave the bank and therefore everybody with a zero credit score obviously has left the bank and therefore your model is picking them up 
like like it's super easy so if you have 100 percent, that's definitely something wrong with your variables even if you have 90 to 100 percent, you have to check that there could be some forward-looking variables the other thing is overfitting you could be overfitting a model and what that means is that you your model has been so well fit to that specific data set that you supplied it that when you tr that it's just heavily relying on the anomalies in that data set and when you feed it a new data set like in a in a month time or uh, something like not not training data not the data that you trained your model on and we'll talk about this a bit a lot more actually in the coming tutorials but so if you feed this model some data that you want to actually predict on, then it will crash. It, well, it won't crash. It, it won't perform as well. It will perform you know, at the 60% mark or something. So that means your model is overfitted. And be very careful about that. We'll talk about overfitting more. In fact, in the coming tutorials, we will learn how to avoid that problem. And finally, if you can get an, an X or this... Um, parameter to be between 90% and 100% and you're not using forward-looking parameters or you're not overfitting, then uh, give me a call because I might have a job for you. <laughs> people like that are rare and I have um, a lot of headhunters looking for people who can uh, do modeling like that. So <laughs> definitely keep that in mind. And now to finish off today's tutorial, we're going to jump into Excel and have a look at our model and see how it compares how it actually performs on that scale. So we're going to take a line, very simple visual analysis. So there's the 50% line. We're going to drag a vertical line over here. As you can see, it crosses the model at about 80%, so 80 and a half percent. Very good model. Um, so all we have to do now is make sure we're not overfitting it and then um, we can start using it. So in the next tutorial, what is going to happen, I will give you a the cap template that I promised and then after that we will learn how to check for overfitting in models and learn how to use test data and the differences between training and test data. And I look forward to seeing you then. Until next time, happy analyzing.